being pregnant should be a beautiful, happy occasion because, you know, bringing a little life to the world. But for us, it wasn't. It was just anxious sort of thing. Like, is the baby going to be OK? We got to 23 weeks and six days, and that sucks. <laughs> that wasn't the way it was meant to be. When you lose something that means so much, someone that means so much to you, and obviously you don't get over it, you don't ever get time heals, but you never get over that loss, ever. As males, there's nothing we can do about it. You know, you just sit there and you support your partner and that's all you can do. Um, it's just helplessness. I have the privilege of being the scientific director of the Preterm Birth Genome Project. This project's critically important because preterm birth is the number one cause of death in children less than five years of age worldwide. So I, I first came across Craig when I was a medical student um, going through uh, King Edward. Craig has the potential to change the way that we manage um, preterm birth and to significantly reduce it. The first time I met Craig, I was in a bit of a panic <laughs> because we came rushing in. Um, uh, my wife was only at 28 weeks and uh, she was very unwell and the baby was coming and we couldn't stop it. We tried everything we could and um, Craig stepped in, he was very calm. He was a, very good from the human side of things but you also knew he had the great expertise of, of his field as well. The really exciting nature about the nature of the work that Craig does is its capacity to influence not just health locally, not just health for an individual person but really this is not an overstatement, but, but the entire world. As an obstetrician, it's wonderful to be able to deliver healthy babies to healthy mothers. Unfortunately, as you do more and more obstetrics, you realise that not all mothers are healthy and not all pregnancies are straightforward. People don't realise how often it happens and, and, and how it affects people. Friends, they'd get pregnant, they think it's just, you get pregnant, you have a baby. Nine months later, here's your baby. They say, oh, you've had a miscarriage, you can just try again. But it was more than just trying again, you, you gave birth to it. A 28-weeker I had, I mean, she was a baby. As part of the work that I do, I deliver many babies that are extremely preterm. It's often very clear that these babies only have a short time to live. And when you're there in the nursery holding the, their hands or giving one of them a hug as they turn off the ventilator because the baby has had a, a critical complication of preterm birth, this is heartbreaking. They're in tears, you're in tears, and all that you want to do at that time is make sure this doesn't happen again to them or to any other women. consultant paediatrician came along and, and said look you're at 23 weeks and five days if we don't resuscitate your children they'll they'll die they won't make it and even if we do resuscitate look there's possibly around a 40 percent chance that they still won't make it and then they say to you and they have to say well what do you want to do and we just looked at each other I, I don't think either of us could talk so babies that are born preterm can have a large number of different complications. They can be motor complications and sensory complications. They can have visual problems, lung problems and developmental problems. And they can also have difficulties in school and then in the workplace. So these are lifelong implications of being born too early. My daughter Molly, um, she suffers from mild cerebral palsy. And um, you know we only detected that after in a, after about a year of her life, and um, so it's a constant battle. Every every week she's got physio uh, appointments she's got to go to. She gets Botox injections, and um, I think yeah, if we were able to get her through to full term in the womb, I think we would have had a much better chance of her not developing uh, or, or having uh, cerebral palsy, and um, it'd make her uh, life so much easier, and, and certainly our lives as parents are a lot easier as well. 
The aim of all of this research is to prevent preterm birth. And to prevent preterm birth, we need to identify those who are at high risk and those who are at low risk. It's been known for more than a decade that genetics plays a huge role in preterm birth. It is the number one risk factor, and the size of this risk is more than tenfold of many of the other established risk factors for preterm birth. The Preterm Birth Genome Project is a global consortium of researchers who are experts in the genetics of preterm birth. Explaining how genetic risks can impact a pregnancy is difficult. The best example that I give to women is to talk about Angelina Jolie and the breast cancer gene screening that she had. So she was tested because of her family history of breast cancer for one of the high-risk breast cancer genes. Based on that, she underwent extensive surgery because she didn't want to end up with cancer with her young family. The approaches that have been done in breast cancer, we are now moving towards obstetrics. Our research has the ability to take genetics to the people. We'll be able to take genetics to people in high resource countries, but we'll also, with the help of WHO, be able to take it to low resource countries. Already the tools exist, and if you look at where we were in medicine 10 years ago and where we are now, imagine where we'll be in another 10 years. Precision medicine is where we apply the correct medicine, the correct treatment for each individual person. Most women who deliver preterm babies, it's their first pregnancy and we have no way of predicting that at the moment. We want to be able to test a woman even prior to pregnancy and say your risk of preterm birth is very low or your risk of preterm birth is very high. For those women at high risk, we can then offer a whole series of different interventions, again targeted at that individual woman. Prevention is the best cure, uh, and that's what this research is all about, really. You know, identifying the people that are at higher risk and then can tailor almost programs for these people so they've got a much better chance of getting right through to full-term birth. It would have been great for us to know that we were at higher risk of having a preterm baby, and, and then certain care and uh, things could have been in place to, to give us a much better chance of getting all the way through and having a healthy baby at the end of it all. One example of tailored medical treatment for preterm birth is demonstrated by Sharon's pregnancies. She gave birth to two babies extremely preterm and both of them died. Through careful investigation, we found that she had a number of genetic variants in one of the genes involved with folate metabolism. And by not processing folate properly, she's prone to having clotting and clotting and bleeding under the placenta can cause placental abruptions, growth restriction and preterm birth. By preventing the clotting and by supplementing her with extra doses of folate, we we're able to give her two healthy term babies without any other intervention required. Going from tears every week in Dr. Craig Pennell's office to him handing me our daughter, words can't describe how happy we were and so grateful we were to him for giving us our miracle daughter, because that's what she is. Our boys are alive today yeah. uh, and have been for the last two and a half weeks and they're there because, because of the research that was done 10, 20 years ago. It would be an amazing ability to, um, to be able to prevent people from going through what we have in, in the last, you know, just the last two and a half weeks, let alone what we're going to face over the next five to ten years. It's going to help people like me um, with with conditions that potentially could lose babies, to not have to suffer, to, to lose a baby. Because it impacts you for the rest of your life and to not have to go through that, it's, it's extremely important. What we're aiming to achieve in the next phase of our research is to complete a preterm birth chip that is designed for global genetic study. This chip is specifically designed looking at Caucasian, African American, Asian, Hispanic and Indian populations. What we will be able to do by this is then expand the work that we're doing in Caucasian populations to different populations around the world. Just like ultrasound can be part of pregnancy, I'd like people to understand that genetics can be part of pregnancy. By doing early tests about an individual woman and her husband and even the fetal genome in pregnancy that we'll be able to personalise care to prevent all of the complications of prematurity and the death and disability that can result from this terrible problem.
I've got three babies and it was from Craig's care that I've got my three kids. Without a doubt, I do not believe that I would have my three kids if it wasn't for Craig. I have absolutely no doubt that we can address the problem of genetics in preterm birth. We have the resources, we have the knowledge, we have the expertise, and we have the international team poised, ready to move forwards. What we are currently lacking is the final phase of funding. We need this research to continue, and we need funding to continue this research, and that will help in turn many, many mums and yeah, many, many happy little lives in the future as well.